When you're performing a field survey, it's extremely important that you take good field notes in your survey field book. These are the notes that surveyors in the office are going to use to figure out what you did in the field. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to structure your field notes when you're doing differential leveling. If you need more information about differential leveling, be sure to refer to the video in the corner. I talk a lot more about what the field procedure looks like and how we're capturing the data. I also go over the calculations and how to figure out the elevations of all the points in a separate video. This video will primarily focus on field notes and how to structure the notes in your field book as well as providing a sketch for the surveyors in the office. Here you'll see I have a blank template for field notes. On the left hand side you see columns separated by vertical and horizontal lines. They're a lot larger so you can put text and numbers in it. And on the right side you see a grid-like pattern uh, that's designed for sketching, although you could put notes here as well. The first thing you want to write in your field book is what kind of project you're doing. So for us, we are doing survey leveling. It's common practice in the industry to use capital letters in your field notes. So be sure to write in capital letters as much as possible. Next, you want to provide a description of where you're located in doing this project. Now, normally you would put an address here of the land that you're surveying, but for the purposes of this video, and because I don't want to disclose my address, I'm just going to write house yard. And now on the other side of the field notes, you'll want to start out by putting the date. So I'll just write date of survey. And this survey took place on September 7th, 2020. So September 7, 2020. Next, you want to put who was involved in the survey. So since it was just me, I like to put just the first initial last name. So just R to Mimi. Next, you're going to want to talk about the time and weather conditions of the survey. So we did this survey at approximately 8 a.m. and the weather was sunny. It was about 65 degrees Fahrenheit and it was a little bit humid. Next, you want to talk about the equipment that you were using. This should include the model number and the type of equipment. So I used a level, and if we look back at the video, we can see that it is an AL32 level. Um, I mean, you could put the serial number, it's really not that important, but I have the information, so I might as well just put it. The last bit of information you may want to add at the top is the reference point for your project. So we use the benchmark one on the manhole and we're going to put that elevation in where we're getting that information from. I'm just going to write BM1 elevation equals 795.00 feet and that is referencing NAVD. 88. Now we've structured the top of our field book. The next thing we're going to talk about is how we structure our data in leveling. We're going to be using six columns and at the top of the column you're going to want to write point which will be the point number to the points that we measure, BS which is backsight, HI which is height of instrument, FS which is foresight, elevations, and then description. Now again, if you watch the field video, you know how to record backsites and foresights. And if you watch the calculations video, you'll be able to calculate the elevations and the instrument heights. So we're not going to need to go through all of that. I also go through calculating accuracy and tolerance. Again, I'm not going to show you how to do that here. Watch those older videos. Um, but when you do write that down, it will look something like this. You see you have the point numbers, you have the back sites, the height of the instrument, four sites, the elevations, and the descriptions. Here's the field check to make sure that the summation of the back sites and the four sites is the same. When you take the difference, that's the error. The tolerance is the error times the square root of the number of measurements taken. Uh, and then that is our tolerance. You don't want to do the adjustments in the field. The adjustments happen in the office. So that'll be on a separate sheet. Um, you don't actually have to write that information down in the field book. The field book is designed to show what kind of information we measured, not the kind of information that we adjusted. And the final part is the sketch of the project. We need to show the surveyors in the office what the conditions of the land looked like, any kind of features that were around our points, 
and the approximate location of all of our points. This is simply a sketch, it's not a full on map with a scale, but you do need to indicate the orientation and draw things relatively in the same scale. Now the first thing we're going to want to put in is a north arrow. An arrow like this, and then just put the letter N, and now we have a north arrow. So we know that there was a house on the property, so I'm going to just draw this in roughly, and I'm going to write house. And we know that there was a fence running along the southwest corner of the home. I'm just going to label this fence. Now the starting point was up here on the top, and that was BM1. We took a shot right here, that one was TP1. And then the last thing is we're going to draw in the control points, so this one was orange. Over here we have green, right over here we have blue. These don't need to be exact locations, however they just need to be in the general vicinity of where those shots were taken. That way when someone looks at the sketch they know where they were in the real world. And then the last thing is let's just add a legend to differentiate the types of points that we have. So we have the triangle, we also have a dot, and then we have a circle. The triangle is considered a benchmark. The solid dot is a turn point, and then the open circle is a control point. And there you go, that is how you set up your field notes when you're doing a leveling project. The main point of the left side is to write down all the numbers that you're measuring, and on the right side you draw up your sketch and label it up as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please be sure to like the video, uh, I really appreciate it. Also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about surveying and other engineering topics. If you guys would like to follow me on Instagram, I have an Instagram, uh, it is just my name, Rami Tamimi. As well, if you want to email me, my email address is rami at tamimi.biz. You can also leave me a comment down below, I respond to all my comments and I'd love to interact with you guys. And with that, I'll see you next time.